All right, you guys, let's talk literary analysis. I know a few of you uh, have already come to me with questions about like, oh my goodness, what is this? You know, we have done this in terms of research on a real world topic, but we haven't done it in terms of literature. So how in the world do you accomplish something like this? Well, the big thing to keep in mind is that with literary analysis, you want to think of your story or your poem or your play, whatever work of literature you're looking at, as something that exists in the real world, even if there's fantastical elements that just would never happen. Okay. And the reason that I say that is because it will give you a much better opportunity to be able to interact with these ideas and ask questions, right? Well, what do I mean when I say ask questions? How do you ask questions of words? Well, honestly, what you do is you read a section and we'll see it as an example in our first class session with uh, the story of an hour, right? We will ask many questions of Louise Mallard, why she does what she does, what her actions actually develop her toward, um, do the things that she's telling us or that the narrator is telling us, do they seem to line up with what we know to be true in the, you know, the scheme of the world that's provided for us? So, you know, if you feel like, oh, I don't know how to ask questions of literature, think about it like this, okay? S when you're watching a movie, right? Everyone, most people, I'll say most people, in no way can you ever say everyone or no one. There's always someone, right? Uh, so most people have seen movies or TV shows. Have you ever seen a movie or TV show where they don't explicitly tell you something's gone on, but yet you, you know, you know in your gut what just happened, right? Whether it's a situation and how it impacts a character, whether it's, it could even be something like a 21st century person goes back in time. We're going sci-fi here, obviously. Goes back in time to the OK Corral, right? So old Western uh, run by men and, you know, and, and it's very lawless. It's, it's this, this time of lawlessness. And this person, 21st century, they're thinking like life is like what it's like now. And then they go back in time and you sit there as a viewer and you say, Oh, that's going to be bad unless they realize what they're getting themselves into. And even if they do, that's going to be bad. They're going to have some, some tough times. And you know what? The movie or the show has not even suggested anything about that yet, but you just know, right? Because you've asked questions about the setting, how, what you know about this character that's now gone back in time, how they're going to interact with this new world that they're placed in, right? And the same thing is what we do in literature. So if someone sits down in an armchair and looks out a window, okay, yeah, like they're literally sitting down in an armchair and looking out the window, but what does that signify? What is that window? Is that window freedom? Is that window a, a breath of fresh air, right? If it's open, is that, is that space just time to think? Is it yearning for something? And based on what the story or the poem or the play is telling you around it, is how you can really understand what's happening. Okay, so that's kind of the big thing about literary analysis. It's things that we do when we view other types of entertainment. It's just words on a page, right? It's just words on a page. So you really want to kind of bring that framework that we have for visual media uh, in this time period, right? And then focus it instead on these characters, the plot, the setting, all of these things that are laid out in a story. Now, anything that we say that's not explicitly stated in a story or a poem or a play, any work of literature is going to be analysis. And it's important that when you use analysis that you back it up with evidence. What gives you that gut feeling that something is uh, happening behind the scenes that we are not privy to? What makes you feel that way? And what you do is you look through, you see what the characters are saying, you see what the narrator is expressing about the situation, right? And then you take it that step further and say, okay, now I see what the character has said. This seems to either conflict or to help with my analysis, right? This thing, this feeling that I have. And if it conflicts, well, there's a point to think about, right? Why is it that this thing that the character is saying is conflicting with what you feel like is happening here, 
right? And you really want to dig into that, right? Is it that they're, you know, it's one of those things are fine, everything's fine, and they're freaking out kind of moments? Or is it that maybe there was some sort of misinterpretation of the plot, right? And you're saying, I think that this situation is thoughtfulness, and yet the person is like saying that they're terrified out of their mind and they just need a minute to breathe, right? Is that thoughtfulness? Is that paralysis? Is that, you know, it's something else? So we really need to take into consideration these types of questions, asking things about the literature. Now, of course, we can't go to the author and say, hey, uh, Kate Chopin, for example, what, what did you mean here? What, what is this particular situation? But you know what? You can't do that in a movie either. You can't do that in a TV show either. So all of these things that you know, we interact with on a daily basis, they happen in a closed universe. And so you wanna think of a story or a poem or a play also in a closed universe. Of course, it doesn't stay closed. The author has uh, interactions with the world around them. So the way that they feel is largely based on limitations or freedoms that they have available to them in their everyday life. You know, so you want to think about all of these things. Everything plays a part. Who is the author? What do they, uh, what do they interact with? What do they feel is just? What is unjust? What are they trying to accomplish with this piece of literature they've written? Are they trying to share some sort of progressive message and, and just say, something's not right. We need to show that. Or are they trying to say, uh, the world is kind of status quo right now. Like, so I'm just going to represent a day in the life. There's been pieces of literature like that. Virginia Woolf wrote Miss Dalloway like that, you know, and a lot of people will find those types of day in the life scenarios boring because I mean, it's the same thing that everyone goes through. You go to the market, you go to the, who calls it the market? You go to the store, you go pick up flowers, you go to, you know, like normal day to day activities. But that's not always the case, right? It depends on that closed universe of your piece of literature. So you really want to think about not only that closed universe, but the world that's happening around the author. I don't know about you, uh, but that old uh, slogan, you know, you leave your home life at the door when you go to work. Does that work for you? Because it, it, it does not work for me. I can't do that. If I'm cranky about something from home, I'm going to try really hard to leave it at the door, but it's not going to stay there, right? It influences the way I, I deal with the world. So if there's this feeling of criticism about the world, in this author's life, that's going to reflect in their work. So you want to, you know, kind of get the feel of what's happening, understand the social situation of a given time period. And it could be as easy as going onto Wikipedia, right? And saying, oh, okay, wow. I didn't realize that there was like a, a war going on during the time that this story was written. I didn't realize that there was a social unrest about something in particular. And once you have that context, you can go back into it and say, okay, do I see that in here? Now, of course, you'd have to cite that context wherever you got it from. Uh, in an essay, you don't really want to use Wikipedia. Uh, and the reason for that is, I mean, because academia hasn't come around yet. Honestly, Wikipedia is awesome. I've contributed to Wikipedia and I know firsthand how carefully they check everything. 20 years ago, Wikipedia was awful. Uh, in the last decade, it's improved greatly, but it's still not acceptable to use in an essay because academia is about 20 years behind everyone else. Okay, so, uh, but using it to get an idea of the situation and kind of helping you to bridge that gap between, well, what was the author dealing with and what is now represented in their work could be a really beneficial, uh, you know, way to, to attack a literary analysis. All right, so hopefully that helps you kind of get an idea of what literary analysis is in a more general sense. Obviously, I couldn't get into specific examples because we haven't read anything together yet, but we will be. Um, so if you have any questions about anything like this, please don't hesitate to let me know. Text me, call me, send me an email, uh, come to office hours, you know, ask during class when we have our class session, um, you know, all of those things. 
okay? Uh, don't hesitate to reach out. I know this is new for a lot of you, so make sure that you ask the questions you need so that you get it right away instead of struggling through it over the next couple of weeks. All right, you guys have a great rest of your day. Do great things, and I'll see you next time. Bye.